And I think we are live on YouTube and I'm also streaming on Amazon for those joining me on Amazon. Give me a second to make sure this is going live. How is everybody? Okay, just making sure that the button, the live stream is going. Okay. All right, so let's get started, everybody. Uh, let me just check the stream, make sure everything is looking okay. And let, right, me, so let's get let me turn that down. Let's see who's in the house. Let's just make sure everything looking okay, everybody. Got my secondary display here. I'm secondary camera or my overhead cam. It looks like we are live on both platforms. I'm trying something new. Uh, I wanted to do both YouTube and on Amazon at the same time because I have this from HP. This has come in. Make sure you're commenting. We So far, we have eight people in the studio, in the studio, in the live stream. Sakura, how are you? Let me just put you up on the screen here. How are you? All okay? Good. Audio is excellent, but is the stream okay in terms of video? Because I am doing it on both Amazon and on YouTube. Coming up. <laughs> okay, how about how is everybody? Um, it's been about a week since I did my last live stream. In the interim, let's do a few housekeeping things. We have seven people on the live stream right now. Make sure you check in at the chat. Hello from North Carolina. How are you doing, Charles? Uh, down south. So this week on the channel, I released a video. I released a couple of videos. One last week, I released the, um, what was it? The Note 10 Lite, I almost forgot. It didn't do great on the channel as my, far as my unboxing and review, or my unboxing video went. And um, as far as the next video, which I did, which was the, um, the Dell Latitude 7220, which was the rugged extreme and they didn't do great at all. And I'm really concerned because the Dell attitudes usually do well on my channel, but we did get this into the studio this week. Um, HP sent this over uh, for my review. I will be sending it back when it's done. It's the HP Chromebook X360 12B and it's a 12 inch Chromebook that has a three to two aspect ratio. Uh, it's got, I believe, a metal design, a ceramic metal or something to that effect, a ceramic white. And it has pen support, and they did supposedly put the pen in the box. So very interesting pen that recharges. It uses a universal standard. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, let's say hello to some people. Tom McDonald, how are you? Boston in the house. Okay. Hello, Kerry. Uh, we got somebody from Carrie's in Trinidad and Trinidad and Tobago. Very nice place. Beautiful place. So I am very happy to see everybody. We have 12 in the live stream right now, but getting back to this, this is by HP. And one of the reasons I wanted to take a look at it is because of its price. You can get it right now on Amazon for three fifty nine. dollars if you see the carousel below, if you're watching me on Amazon, you can take a look at it, more information there where you can buy it. Um, as far as specs are concerned, it's not going to blow you out of the water in terms of specs. I'm just waiting for a few more people. We've got 18. I just want to get a few more people in and then we'll open this thing up. Um, just to go over some of the specs real quick, it's a 12 inch HD plus display. That means it's got a resolution of 1366 by 912. Uh, supposedly has narrow bezels. We'll see. Three to two aspect ratio, dual speakers, audio by B and O. It's got a full size keyboard, large trackpad, ceramic white polished finish with 3D metal keyboard deck. It supposedly has a USB A port, two USB C ports for power, data, and display out. And I'm very interested in getting this open. Now, it does come with a rechargeable USI pen. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. That's a separate purchase, by the way, $59. It should be available this week, according to HP. It wasn't available till, till now, but I think it should be available. 
and it could stick magnetically to the side of the device. And we'll go over all that when we get it unboxed. How is everybody doing? Um, stylus support. Yes, it does have stylus support. We'll go over that. Sorry, normal. Good to see you again. So we got 18 in the house. I think we're going to start right now. Um, so let's just get this thing unboxed. Uh, let me bump up this screen to a, so we can see better. And you know, it's a pretty small box. It's not a huge device. And of course I've got my knife with me and we'll just open it up. Okay, let me close this. Okay. So everything's sealed up. So let me, everybody hopefully can see me and hear me okay. It's a little tight space here, but we got it. So let's see what you get in the box. Okay, let's start with the charger. Let's put, let's just pull this stuff out and then deal with all that. Okay, so let's just get this all out of here. A little messy, but okay. So we got the pen here. We'll talk about that. We got the unit. Let's take it out of the plastic real quick so we don't have to deal with that later. We now have 16 of you in here. Actually, it feels pretty nice. Actually, it looks pretty nice. Um, we get a... Let's see here. This is looks like a 45 watt power adapter and it is USB-C, which is good. And then of course you get your extension cable cord. And then of course we get the pen. Let's just open it up now. Okay, so this is the pen and let's take a look at it in a moment. Let's see here. So I think this has something, yeah, so so look at this. It opens up, it like slides out, and then you get your USB-C port to charge it. So no batteries needed to buy is in terms of like a quadruple A batteries we normally see. And so we got the pen. So I'm happy to see that. We may have to charge that up. Uh, ports, let's take a look on the right side. We got the volume rocker up and down. We, If everybody can see it okay. We've got the... Looks like a Kensington lock port, a USB-C port, and a USB-A port. Moving over to the left side, you get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a, another USB-C port. I think you can charge, it does data charge and display out. Both USB-C ports do that. Micro SD car slot for storage expansion, which you'll definitely need on this. Um, and also the uh, power button. As you can see there, you can see the hinges. And I got to tell you, for $359, this thing feels pretty solid. It's not that light. It feels pretty, pretty solid. Um, let's see. I'm glad to see that the video and audio quality is excellent. And for those, again, to remind you, $359 at Amazon. Check the carousel below if you're watching me on the Amazon live stream. Uh, if you're on the YouTube stream, I will put, once I'm done, I'll put the link below where you can buy it, get more information. So. I like the the way this ceramic white looks on this so far. There's a little flex on the cover, but again, this is a budget device. Let's open it up. And as you can see here, let's put this down here. We can move this out of the way. Okay, so here we are. And you know, with the Chromebooks, it's pretty instant. To let's see how bright this thing can go. It gets pretty bright. Let's go. Now I'm gonna put in my one second, I'm gonna put in my password. Okay, and now I'm putting in my Google password, my Gmail. But of course, it's looking for updates first. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so here we are. Okay. I count as two wife is watching also. Good, Charles. I'm glad to see that. Got 16 of you watching right now. Glass trackpad. I think so. It's nice, whatever it is. It's got a metal frame around it. It's actually pretty good. Let me just check the stream. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, normal in the house. Okay, so uh, review sync, follow setup. Uh, let's accept and continue. More accept. I'm just going through the initial setups setup right now. Uh, I'm going to skip these. Um, let's just skip those for now. Now, here's one of the things you're going to have an issue with, and that's going to be... Um, storage space. Now this has 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage and it really is uh, not too much. But again, you're going to need that S micro SD card here to expand the storage. The screen, I'm going to tell you something right now for uh for a for an HD display which is 19 13 was it 1366 by 9, 900 and something. It's actually pretty good. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. Let me move this out of the way here for a minute. Okay, so here you can see, and when you log in, it knows right away. So the, the display, let me just go to a website here for a second. Hold on. I got to tell you, this display looks pretty good. Now, the pen needs to be charged, so we'll do that in a moment. Um, but as you can see, it's a touch display. It It's bright enough. It's not the brightest I've ever seen. This is brightness all the way up as you can see here. And I gotta tell you, it's not bad. Hey, I uh, feel Chromebooks are way too basic. It's me a real lap laptop any day. Now, one of the reasons Maxwell, six Maxwell 99, I wanted to check this out is price. The fact that you can install Linux on this because it's running an Intel processor. And it also um, is, is getting better and better, especially with the fact that you could run Android apps on it. So this is not only good for students, this is good for serious users starting to really develop uh, with Linux and so forth. And they want something not to break the bank, but they're able to do a lot more than they used to be able to do on a Chromebook, but they don't want to spend a lot of money. This is $359. I mean, you just keep that real. Um, looks good. I'm glad to see that. Okay, uh, now the pen, now let's talk about the pen for just a moment. Um, I had that over here. So the pen is gonna use, um, it's called USI. Now what it is, is a standard, they're gonna standardize the pen so you can use it on multiple devices. It's an industry standard spec for cross system active stylus. It's a single stylus for all USI devices. This is a USI device. Uh, two, it has two way communication protocol. Type C charging, power saving mode, long battery life according to HP, $59.99 as an accessory. It does not come with this in the box. This is something they sent me to test out. Um, so we'll have to get this charged. Let me see if I have a USB C cable here that I can charge this real quick. Hold on one moment. that one. Okay. I'm going to have to search for one somewhere. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, the little disorganized today, but I probably should have had a USB cable here. I know I do have them here somewhere. Hold on. I'll be right back. Just talk amongst yourselves.
Okay, I am back. Sorry about that. Got a USB C cable. Did I lose too many of you? Not too many of you. Okay. All right, one second. Okay, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a charge. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it lights up. i got a short cord here. But it lights up when you're charging, so that's pretty good. We'll keep that to the side here while that's charging. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. Hope everybody can see it. It looks pretty snappy so far. Now, one of the benefits of running the Chrome OS is... Uh, shout out to my shoes. Yeah, this, you're in the wrong stream here, my friend. Uh, <laughs> the pen has pressure levels. Yeah, I don't know what the pressure sensitivity on the pen is, um, Sakura. I know that it's a, it's a universal standard. I'm not sure if it has 4,096 levels or 2,048 or whatever it is, uh, or 1,024 or what we were seeing in the past. So I'm trying to find that information on the pen. But right now I'm charging it. And as far as... The Chromebook itself, the display, let's talk about the display a little bit, and then we'll talk about running Android apps. We'll talk about what you can do with this, uh, the keyboard. Now, the keyboard is, is supposed to be a backlit keyboard. Um, and it, uh, let me think, what is it, Alt? It changes the backlight. It's hard to see with all the lights in here, but it's got a backlit keyboard. Let me just double check that. I wanna give you the right information. Magnetic dock, um, let me go to the, so they sent me some information from HP on the keyboard, full size keyboard, large touchpad. I'm not sure if this is backlit, so we're gonna have to find out. Okay. It's a HD display, but it's not a 1080p display. It's a lower resolution, but I gotta tell you, it looks pretty good. Now, what do you think of the bezels? Now, I like the aspect ratio. It's a three to two aspect ratio. And if you watch my channel, you know that I really do like it. We'll test the sound in a moment. Now, three to two aspect ratio to me is the great, it's a great aspect ratio if you wanna get things done like uh, productivity, uh, browsing on a, on a web browser, as you can see here, it's taller. It's, uh, it's almost like the, the three to two of a MacBook uh, that we we're seeing. Uh, or rather of other, like a Surface product, like the Surface Laptop 3, that's a three to two aspect ratio. And I love that this is a three to two. It's a little bit more square, as you can see here. And of course, you can put it into the different modes. You can put it in tent mode. You can put it into um, stand mode, as you see here. And then of course, you can put it into tablet mode, which is supposedly will disable the the keyboard and actually doesn't feel too bad scrolling with it. And then once the pen gets a little bit of charge, we'll test out the pen, but pretty good considering this has four gigabytes of Ram, 32 gigs of EMMC storage. So it's not going to be the fastest when it comes to that regard. But again, the Chrome OS doesn't need as much uh, as, an, uh, as windows, of course. So this is definitely something doable. Now you can install Linux on this. I'm not going to do this on the live stream, but in my review, I will cover Linux on this. Uh, I will give, of course, a full review on this, a full unboxing with a more polished look, of course, but I wanted to get this unboxed to on the live stream tonight. And yeah, you have the latest Spectre, and we're going to be doing more about Spectres coming up very soon. And I also have the Dell XPS 13 2020 coming so get ready for that that's going to be exciting that's on its way very soon so i like that this has a really nice display and if you look at the display it really is impressive considering this is 350 dollars or so so that's pretty good all right let's test out the sound so if we go back here let's just te test this out on a youtube video Let's uh, let's use the app. Let's see how the app does. Remember, this can run Android apps, as you can see here. We'll 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 see how this looks. Remember, everything's setting up for the first time here. And look, Elon did this as well. Okay, so that's the Android app. Let's um, 
let's close that. Let's go back here and just play that here. Not bad. But I am happy to have a USB-C port finally on a Microsoft Surface. Let's make it louder. And it's good to see a 3.5 millimeter headset jack on the left side. Now, that's a dying breed, of course, so I'm glad to see it on this device. Now, let's get it to on 1080p. The top is the this is 1080p. Volume rocker up and down. And lifting the kickstand reveals your micro SD card slot for storage expansion. That sounds pretty good. The top firing speaker here. And the magnetic connection is super strong, so the keyboard cover won't be falling off anytime soon. And the pen sticks magnetically to the side. Again, another super strong connection. You got to love it. And it has a 165-degree kickstand, which gives you the perfect viewing angle each and every time. I have to say, I love it. I'll tell you what. And as far as the keyboard itself, it's pretty comfortable to type on. Pretty Sounds pretty good. Thank you, Yasmin. I'm glad you like my videos. Uh, word on the any word on the Galaxy Book Flex yet? Not yet. Fareed is in the house. How are you, Fareed, my friend? How you doing? Uh, he's got some exciting stuff coming up, as I mentioned on the last stream. Uh, let's see the DPS and CF. The sound is good to me. I'm glad. So yeah, this sounds really good. Um. I'm impressed. So far, the display, three to two aspect ratio, the speakers are really good. I am impressed. Um, battery life, I don't know what it's going to be so far. We'll have to find out uh, how that's going to fare. I can imagine, according to HP, I think you can get eight to 10 hours on this on a single charge, which is good. Um, so, you know, obviously that's going to be good if you're, if you're looking to take this on the road, which I know a lot of you will. It's pretty light, pretty thin. And let's take a look at the width and so forth. As you can see here, um, the, it's a pretty sleek looking device. Uh, I don't know if I showed you the bottom. And it's got two rubber feet here. Really clean looking. I, I, I'm very impressed. All right, let's take a look at the pen. And look at that instant on. It, you know, this is what a Chromebook brings to the table. Now, you don't always need the most fancy, most expensive device. Sometimes for a good price, you can get some good bang for the buck. All right, let's take a look at the pen. It's been charging for a few minutes, so we probably have enough here to demonstrate. So, yep, it's working. And I got to say, it's pretty responsive so far. Let's, uh, let's see what you hit the pen. Let me make sure everybody can see that. So what you can do, obviously, you can do capture the region, if you can see here. You can do all sorts of things. Capture the screen. You can create a note. So, like, I'm going to do a note right now. Okay. So not the snappiest thing in the world, but oh, where's my note? Create a note. So hello, everybody. From Andrew. And I got to tell you, palm rejection working well. Pretty good. How are you, Chandra Kant Patel, in the house? Yeah, I got to tell you, it does. <laughs> it sounds better than the ThinkPad, which you know, if you watch my reviews, one of the weak points of a great device is the speakers. It could be better, but this is actually pretty good in terms of sound. Uh, I am too. That's one of the reasons I'm starting to look at Chromebooks. I think the functionality has gotten better. The productivity has gotten better. The, the ability to run Linux is something to take a look at. If you're looking on, if you're watching this on Amazon Live, check out the carousel below. This is one of two products I'm going to take a look at today. This and the Asus Chromebook, uh, which is about $500 for the flip, the C434, which I'm going to be doing a full review of. Uh, this I'm going to do a full review of. This came in from HP earlier this week. For those joining me now, this is the HP Chromebook X360 12B, which was just released by um, HP. You can buy this over at Amazon. You can buy it over at HP. The pen is now, should be available by the time... Uh, the, now it should be according to HP, $59, a separate accessory. And I'm thinking this is really good so far. I like that you could take notes, you have handwriting recognition. So say if I want to go to a website, 
So let me see how this works. I forgot, uh, I haven't used this in a while. So if I wanna use this to go to a website, um, where's the keyboard? I forget how, I haven't used a Chromebook in a while. Let's see here, magnifying glass. I know you can do all sorts of things with the handwriting recognition, but I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm probably doing something wrong. Uh, I got a lot of good things coming to the studio, so stay tuned. For those who want more premium stuff, it's coming, so don't don't worry. But this, actually, for $359, I got to say, really good. And I'm going to take a look in a few moments at the Asus Chromebook Flip C30, C434. Now, I, did real, I didn't realize when I told um, Asus that I did unbox it earlier this year. I never got to my full review on it, and there's a reason for that. It's now $500 over at Amazon, which is definitely a steal for one premium Chromebook. But I got to tell you, this is really good. Now, it's running an Intel processor. Uh, let me get, get you the exact uh, chip it's running. I believe this is the uh, N4000, if I'm not mistaken, which is the Celeron processor. And so far, four gig gigs of RAM. Again, not a lot, not a lot of storage either, which is 32 gigs of EMMC storage, which is a little bit of a slower storage. But again, Chrome OS, you don't need more. I would have liked a little bit more in terms of the onboard storage, but you can live with that. You do have the micro SD card slot to expand the storage. It's on the left side here. And as you can see, it's right there. Uh, so you'll definitely want to do that. Put all your movies and stuff on that and take it with you on an airplane. Should give you eight to 10 hours according to HP. So looking, looking pretty good. So we have 20 people in the live stream. Um, does it have a front-facing camera, William? Yes, it does. It's right here. And let me, uh, let's see if we can go, go to that. So this is the camera. Actually, not too bad. I'm going to try to do this in a way where you can see it. How can I do this? So without too much reflection, there it is. It's not too bad. Um, definitely good for Skype, definitely good for video conferencing. So I'm trying to see a way we can, I can show it to you. Oops. Sorry about that. But a definitely very nice front facing camera. There it is. Why do I keep losing it? Uh, very responsive so far in terms of snappiness. Um, Let's go to YouTube. I don't want to use somebody else's video. Let's use my video. Let's stay in Chrome for now. As you can hear, the sound is very good. The past 10 days, I've been using the Samsung Galaxy Book S as my daily driver when it comes to my laptop. I've been taking it everywhere. I've been going to cafes. I've been going to meetings. I love the always-on connected LTE, but more importantly, I wanted to see how performance was considering this is running the all-new Snapdragon 8CX from Qualcomm. And I got to say... So, Charles, HP is marketing this towards, I, I think, students for people who want to do a little bit more but don't want to spend a lot. Um, according to their press materials, let me see, they, 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 they do give some insight as to who the customer is. I could tell you right now. It's uh, average age. You're looking at, let's see here. They talk about it. So you're looking at about um, average. The most Chromebook users are millennials or younger, according to them. 38% are, so 54% are 18 to 34. 55 and over are 8%. So it's really geared towards that 18 to 34. And then for the 30, 35 to 54 age, 38%. Um, so People are looking to save money, are going to look at this. Chromebook buyers purchase, tend to purchase things for battery life. They're looking at price, and they're also looking for the Chrome OS, according to HP. And it makes sense. That's who they're targeting. Um, that's who they're targeting with this. But I got to tell you, with the ability to run Linux, with the ability to use this with the pen, which works pretty good, I got to tell you, I'm very impressed with this so far. I was expecting something to have a cheap feel. It doesn't have a cheap feel at all. It's actually pretty solid. Um, I like the color of it with that white. 
it looks really, really nice. Now let's talk about the keyboard, uh, Chandra Tal, Chandra Kant Patel, one of my favorite viewers. Okay, so I can tell you, looking good, really good key travel, and I. I think it's backlit, but I'm not sure. It's hard for me to tell because of the studio lights. But uh, really, really nice. Uh, and I got to tell you, this this keyboard is nice. Now, I'm really impressed with the Bang & Olufsen speakers. Uh, really good. Now, key travel, very good. Very little flex on the keyboard, which is something we definitely want to see. Um, nicely spaced out keys. Uh, the cursor keys are down here. That's fine. They look good. Um, you got all your Chrome OS keys up here, back, forward, uh, refresh, full screen, uh, connect to a monitor and so forth, which we can try. Well, I can't do it. I'm connected to a monitor. Uh, brightness up and down, mute, volume up and down, and of course, lock button. So uh, really, really good so far. I'm really impressed with the speaker grill. It sounds good up here. Uh, not too much to complain about iPad mini versus this, what's your opinion? Well, this is, if you want more productivity work and less consumption, uh, Fareed, I would go with this. But if you're in the iOS or the uh, Mac or the Apple ecosystem, uh, maybe the iPad mini would be good because it's very, very portable. Um, and it might be something that you might want to consider. But I think the fact that this has such a good keyboard on it, I'm really impressed with that. The fact that you can use it with the pen, uh, might tilt the favor in this because this is $359, which is comparable to an iPad mini, of course. Uh, but I think you can do a lot more with this. The fact that you could run Android apps natively on this, which is great. The fact that you can run Linux on this is a big game changer, in my opinion. And I will be doing that in the full review. So stay tuned. But I'm really impressed with this so far. I think this might be a winner. And I'm going to put it through its paces, of course. And do a full review on this, but uh, I'm so far I'm really liking it. Screen resolution. Okay, so I said it earlier, Tarell. How are you? The screen resolution is, and let me get you the exact number because it's a little bit unusual. Um, the display is. Just give me a moment. Um, have it here. It was. Uh, I just want to give you the exact number. They're, they're saying, by the way, up to 12 hours of battery life, 12, 3 to 2 aspect ratio. So the display is 1366 by 912. It's a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. It's a 12-inch display, and it's looking pretty good. I'm impressed on just how nice it is. It's bright enough. It's not the brightest I've ever seen. But again, at $359 on Amazon, this is definitely something to consider. Uh, really good. And I think if you're going to, if you like to take notes and you're an artist, definitely invest in the pen. That's $59, which should be available by the, by the time you're seeing this, of course. So it's good. And I like the fact that it has the rechargeable USB-C port on this. You don't have to search for any quadruple A batteries. Um, so the keyboard arrow sizes here, as you can see here, they're, they're a little small. And the placement is below the shift key here, as you can see. But working okay. Uh, nicely spaced out keyboard. Good key travel. I like it. iPad keyboard and pen almost as much as this Chromebook. Yes, that's one of the selling points, I think, of the Chromebook is its price. Um, and the fact that you're now getting more functionality than you did in the past, that it's not just a glorified Chrome, it's not just a glorified web browser anymore, as some people would term that. This is much, much more productive. You can run Android apps on this, which is a key. You can run Linux on this, which is a key, which is really good. So Charles, the pen is, um, let me get to my press material we talked about a little bit earlier. So the pen is that it's using the USI or Universal Stylus Initiative. And what it does is it's a single stylus you can use with all USI devices. And it has two-way communication uh, protocol, according to HP. It has Type-C charging capability, power saving mode, and long battery life, according to HP. And so far, I just charge it for a few minutes and it 
Oh, there it is. And it's working really, really well. So it gave me a nice charge, I guess. It, it doesn't probably doesn't take long to charge. I will, of course, talk about that in the full review. But pen technology is it's new. It's going to be a universal type of stylus. So you can use it in more than one type of device, which I like. So interesting. I don't know the pressure sensitivity. I don't know any of that yet. I'm hoping to get that information from HP. So the Wi-Fi is looking good so far. I've gotten a pretty good connection here, um, down here. Um, I don't. Let's do a speed test. I I don't know if it's going to be great because my Wi-Fi here is not the best. Speed test. Let's do the speed test from Cox, I guess. Internet speed test, but pretty snappy on you know the Chrome browser, of course. Um, Let's take a look. Let's compare it. But again, this will, we're doing this as just to see kind of thing. Uh, again, my internet's not the best here, but it's doing pretty good so far. It's getting about two, almost 300 down. Or it's over 300. That's good. I'm supposed to get up to a, a gig uh, down and up to, I think, 35 up. And it's actually exceeding that which is impressive. So not bad. And I believe it's dual band Wi-Fi, so you definitely can get better speeds on this. So pretty, pretty good. It's released, it's it's available now. Um, I believe I have it. If you're watching me on um, Amazon Live right now, you can get it in the carousel. You can just do a search on HP. Uh, you can go on HP, of course, or you can do a search on Amazon just for HP Chromebook X360 12B. It should come up. So very good internet speed so far. I'm impressed. It, I believe it has Bluetooth 5.0. Let me just double check. Tell you in a moment. Um, hold on. So Bluetooth 5 on this, it's 802.11 AC dual band wireless Bluetooth 5.0, which is great. It's good to see that. So far, so good, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, I am liking this. All right. So do you want me to uh, put this away for now? And let's go to the Asus that they sent me, which is a little bit more premium to give you a little bit of a contrast to this. Yeah, you know, let's do it. It's We're already 37 minutes in. We could always come back to this a little bit later. I know I wanted to keep this to an hour. One of the things I liked about this, again, is that ceramic white uh, lid. It's got some chrome branding, HP branding, very clean looking. Uh, well, as far as Android, I'm not sure how that works with the Android. Let's uh, open it up. Is there any way to tell for those Chrome users out there, Chromebook users, Chrome OS, um, to find out what version of Android this can run? We'll find out. We're going we're gonna to come back to that, William. Uh, I don't know. But I definitely think it's a winner. Any 4G LTE Chromebook set to release this year? Uh, not, I don't know about LTE. I'm hoping that we will get some. I'm hoping that Samsung will release one with that Chromebook. All right, let's get to the next Chromebook, my second one of the evening. We'll come back to this if we have time. Okay. So... <laughs> So this came in, okay? So this is the Asus Chromebook Flip C434. Now, if you any of you watch my channel, you know I actually unboxed it. I never got to a full review on this earlier this year. But one of the reasons I said to Asus, send it over when they offered this to me to take a look at is because it um, it's premium. It's got a a very nice display on this, a full HD display with very thin bezels. It's got an all metal design. It's really, really impressive. And it's, of course, a, a convertible. We could put it into the different modes. So let's get this open. And one of the reasons I wanted to check this out, $500 in the link below. Of course, I'll put it uh, in a moment. But if you're watching me on Amazon Live, you definitely can check this out over uh, in the carousel to check it out. So let's uh, let's unbox this. So as you can see here, let's just take out the laptop or the Chromebook. We'll just put that to the side. And then I think 
you get the the power adapter and i think that's pretty much it for now i don't think there's a pen or anything i'm i don't remember you get some documentation and that's it so let's just put this to the side okay so this is the asus chromebook flip c434 you get a us plug it is um according to this it's a 45 watt adapter. I think it is. And pretty compact. It's a USB C. As you can see here, I love to see that as USB C, of course. Let's put that to the side. Let's just get that out of the way. And of course, the unit itself. Wow, that's nice. I forgot about this. This is really, really nice. So this has a very premium look and feel. All metal, aluminum here, very nice. Oops. Um, pretty thin, pretty nice. Not, it's pretty light also. On this side, you have a USB-C port. Of course, you have a micro SD card slot. And on the left side, you get another USB-C, USB-A a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a volume rocker up and down, and of course your power button. Okay. On the bottom, you have two bottom facing speakers, bottom firing speakers for a little feet here, all metal design, very premium. So this is, uh, let me just tell you what it is. This is the Allen. How are you? Good to see you. Another great viewer of mine who always is commenting and really good. Um, this is the Asus Chromebook Flip C434, which Asus asked me to take a look at. And I said, yes, I didn't realize I had already unboxed this earlier this year when it was at its full price. It's right now $500 over at Amazon. And I think it's a great deal. Wow. Now, this is the difference between the two. Now this, a little bit more money, of course, but you can see the difference. This is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. That was a 3 to 2. I actually like the 3 to 2, but I forgot how premium this is. Just give me a moment while I put in my Wi-Fi. Now, now I'm putting in my um, my Google, my Gmail. So far, looking good. Putting in my password. Okay, and we're up and running. And that's one of the beauties of Chrome OS is how fast you can get up and running. Very little load times, if at all. Uh, let's just accept and continue. More and more accept. I wonder if this pen works. Let's see. I don't know if this has pen support. I, I think it does, but I'm not sure. Let's try the Surface Pen on this. Let's see. Not the Surface Pen. Let's try. Let's try this one. No. One more. We gotta whack them. I don't know if this has pencil, but I don't remember to be honest. All right, we'll 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 figure this out. This has a core M3 processor, I believe, inside of it, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be. I think it's the core M3. Um, I have this mouse excellent for multimedia consumption. I agree. I did unbox this earlier this year, and. And they already can. I love this that you could. They already know my voice. Well, it, it could be a good or bad thing. Um, so yeah. So there are some updates. I mean, how black this display is as far as the blacks are. So beautiful. Uh, let's take a look at. Let's go to. Let's go to my website. This just to give you an idea. And it looks pretty good so far. I mean, I I I love the bezels on this. It's so thin. They do have a webcam on the top here. Metal build really good. So so this is so this is the difference between a three hundred and fifty dollar device, by the way, which I love so far. I'm very impressed with that HP Chromebook. 
but this is a little bit more premium and, and you can see the metal on this is really really nice um five hundred dollars again a lot for chromebook maybe but maybe not because you can run linux on this you can run android apps as i said very very good so they say this is the chromebook with the purse you can go with the google one they've been promoting that uh very responsive i believe this has the core m3 let me uh let me go check out the specs real quick you can get this over at amazon it's so 502 dollars with prime right now four gigs 64 gigs of ram of uh, storage you could also get it with eight and 64 eight and 64 right now is six hundred and eight dollars the four gigs 64 is five hundred dollars and it's the laptop editor's choice award of 2019 so really really good 14 inch full hd 1920 by 1080 four-way nano edge display uh, very thin bezels, five millimeters thin, and it also has 360 degree hinge, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigs of eMMC storage, two USB-C ports, or Gen 1. You get a USB-A Gen 1, uh, three pound all aluminum body, so that's good. Um, very durable and uh, and really good so far. Uh, also, you get pretty good battery life on this, if I remember correctly. So very, very nice. Uh, let's see, um, do they tell you what the processor is? I believe from the marketing material, I believe it was a core M3, if I'm not mistaken. We'll, we'll double check that in a moment, but very, very good. It's a backlit keyboard. I am super impressed with this so far. How's everybody enjoying the live stream? Al, Al Vanderlaan, I definitely agree with you. It's a nice Chromebook. Now, the Pixel Slate is on, discounted, becomes a very intriguing, Douglas, very intriguing uh, proposition. If you can get it at a great price, that might be the way to go. If you're looking for a Slate-type device, if you're looking for convertible-type device with the hinge like here, this might be a little bit better. This one has 8 gigabytes. I think this is the 8. I think they sent me the 8 gigabytes. I'll have to double-check that. And look who's in the house. Frankie Tech. Oh, my God. Cheers from Hong Kong. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, good to see you. Uh, how does this compare to the Samsung Chromebooks? Frankie, I think this compares very nice, but I got to tell you, when I was at CES, I got a chance to look at that Samsung Chromebook in red, and that thing was absolutely gorgeous. And I can't wait to review that. Thank you, Charles. By the way, everybody knows Frankie. He's got a fantastic channel. If you like the phones coming out of China. If you like budget phones, if you like premium phones, he's definitely the way to go. One of my favorites, of course. Uh, thank you. Okay. And if you don't know, check out Frankie's channel, Frankie Tech. You can catch him on pretty much almost the daily stuff, right, Frankie? I know you're doing a lot. I did a massive battery um, comparison, which was pretty impressive. I, um, I don't know how you do it. I know how long those things take, man. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, it's give it to Frankie, man. His his channel blew up so fast. Uh, we did a collaboration last year when he was in Las Vegas, and we did a little video together. Man, the guy is just was on fire, and he's continued to do a great job. Um, okay, so I'm really liking this display. Now, if th again, this is a full HD display, and I like the bezels. Now, this is a pretty bright display, um, but with the lights in the studio, it's hard to really get gauge. I'll have to do all my measurements, and of course, in the full review. Um, pretty, pretty fast in terms of that. We could load um, Linux on here, which I plan to do for the full review. Looking to do some gaming on this. Uh, with Steam, so we'll, we're going to see how that's going to work through the uh, Linux build, and that should be pretty interesting. And I'm looking to do a lot with this as far as productivity. Same goes for the HP Chromebook. Now, for those joining late, so for those joining late, I already unboxed this. This was sent to me from HP, and um, thank you, Charles. I'm a pre I appreciate it. This was sent by HP, $359. If you're watching me on live on Amazon as well, it'll be in the carousel. Um, also pretty impressive. It came with a universal pen, 
that charges via USB-C and really good. I'm going to be doing my full review very, very soon. How's everybody enjoying the stream? Does it look okay? Uh, can you see the display outside? Well, if I remember correctly, when I unboxed it originally, I thought the display was a little bit glossy, as you can see here, and it gets bright. I, I would say this is about 300 nits. I, I, I'm not thinking more than that. I don't remember the exact measurements on this, but I think it got bright enough. You could definitely use it outdoors. In direct sunlight, you may have some issues, of course, so... Um, you know, Frankie said, ha, a bit too much recently. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. How does this compare to some? So we already talked about that. So we have 22 of you in the live stream. I'm kind of liking the live streams. I'm really enjoying it. I'm making, I'm trying to make this a weekly thing. Is this something you guys want? I'm trying to build these up. Um, normally when I get a laptop like this or a Chromebook or whatever into the studio, I will do an unboxing, very polished, of course, and then do my review. Uh, I wanted to start. Turn, turning some store stuff, more stuff out and trying to expand into Chromebooks as well as in addition to the laptops that I do look that I do. And um, so far it's looking good so far. I'm, I'm really impressed with this from Asus and the one from HP. Now, right now we're about 51 minutes on the live stream. I wanted to keep it around an hour, maybe a little bit more if, if how, depending how things go. Uh, let me just check the stream real quick. Um, it is looking pretty decent. I'm trying to find out better solutions for the stream quality. And as this goes on, you know, I just had this front camera. Now I have my uh, overhead cam, which really comes into play with these unboxings. So that's really good. I do have the Dell XPS 13 2020 coming. So get ready for that. I'm going to do extensive coverage on that. I have other stuff coming as well from Asus. But this is the first one out of the gate from Asus with my, with them. So this I'm hoping to do well with this. So spread the word. I need to do well on this review to keep getting more from them. I'm I'm sure. So, um, okay. So right now we're about 20 people in the live stream. We're we're doing this on Amazon Live. If you are interested in these two products that I featured the HP Chromebook X360 12B or the Asus Chromebook Flip C434 that you have here. Now, one of the benefits, of course, is that you can put it into the tent mode just like you could with the other device we looked at from HP. You could have the stand mode and, of course, the tablet mode. And I don't think I don't think it has pen support. Now, one of the differences between the two, and let's just uh, put this over here, and let me bring... This, which is a 12-inch device as opposed to a 13-inch or whatever. I think that was a 14-inch. Um, you can see the difference. I know my light is in the way. There we go. You can see the difference between the two. This is the 16 to 9 aspect ratio. This is the 3 to 2 aspect ratio. This is more like a book, textbook. So for a student with a pen, you can use that. Or you can go with that 16 to 9, which is great for media consumption. You have less bars on it. Asus makes some great products, Frankie. I definitely agree. Charles, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It And it makes it great that I can interact with my audience, which I love. I like the keyboard on the HP unit better. The keys are slightly larger, and the symbols on the keyboard are also bigger and easier to see, other than this Asus unit has better specs. Yeah, the better specs are on here. It's going to be faster. Um, it has more storage. This will have um, less storage less speed in terms of processing power, but it is a three to two and it does have a, a good keyboard. I think they're both really good keyboards. This one's pretty solid. And then this one, we could do side by side here so you can see. And what I'll do is I'll take off the comments for now. But as you can see here, definitely the keys are a little bit more spaced out. I actually like this HP keyboard, to be honest. I'm really liking it. What do you, so Chandra Khan, I know you like the form factor of the Asus 
This is 16 to 9. It has a uh, really sleek look, I think. This has a taller look, more for productivity, better for web browsing. So it's, uh, you see more on the screen. This is the 3 to 2 aspect ratio. I mean, I like them both. I think they have their use case scenarios for the di different form factors. Uh, tell me in the comment section, what do you guys think? Now, I am open for Super Chats. I forgot to mention. And don't forget to hit the like button. I want to make sure people are uh, seeing this. So the algorithm definitely likes when you comment, when you like. So absolutely, Sakura, I agree 100%. For watching media, 16 to 9 is much better. You don't get the black bars like you do on the... Um, Let's just give a good look. Let, let's, uh, so you see here, like if I play my video here, let's just stay in Chrome. So on this one, we can get an idea of the sound. What is this doing? Like Charlie, you know, I love the Dell XPS 13, so, the Dell XPS 15. I like all their consumer-based laptops pretty much, and I really like their offerings. But I also have my eye on their business-focused line, the Latitude line, of course. I reviewed a number of them this past year in 2019, but I wanted to check out one more as we start 2020, and there's a good reason. Not only is the next one. So listen to this one. If I'm like Charlie, you know I love the Dell XPS 13, love the Dell XPS 15. I like all their consumer-based laptops pretty much, and I really like their offerings. But I also have my eye on their business-focused line, the Latitude line, of course. I reviewed a number of them. What is this, Patreon? What is this? But I wanted to check out one more. Okay. Let's I'm move. From Dell let's get to something with a white background. Selection, you won't be disappointed. Let's start off on the left get side. The box, get your power so cord. Next to that is a Thunderbolt 3 -port. So you see there's, there's no black bars. This has a black bar over here. So you can see a black bar here and no bars here. So that's the benefit of 16 to 9 for multimedia consumption. And 3 to 2, better for something like web browsing, as you can see here. You see more on the display. So that's the big difference. So... That's, you know, so so that's what we're looking at with these two types of devices. Very different in a lot of ways, similar in a lot of ways. They're both running the Chrome OS. And one of the reasons that I mentioned in the early part of this live stream is one of the reasons I wanted to check it out is because that it is a... Um, a good affordable choice when you as opposed to Macintosh or Mac OS or Windows where they can get very expensive. These can give you more options, especially if you're on a budget, especially if you're a student. This one comes in $359 at Amazon. This one comes in at a reduced price of $500 right now. You can bump up to the eight gigabytes for the more storage, I think 128 for about $100 more. But both bring something to the table. Both can run Linux. Both can run Android apps out of the box. And that, to me, are game changers, that things you couldn't do a couple of years ago on, an, on Chrome OS. So it's not just a glorified web browser anymore is what I'm trying to say. As far as build between the two, I love this ceramic white, and I love the all-metal design of this. So... Really premium build on both. I don't know about pen support on this. I got to look that up. Does anybody know? HP does have the better sound with the B&O speakers. I agree. Um, according to William, he thinks it's HP, and I, I tend to agree with him. This isn't bad as far as sound. This sounds better. I'm telling you, this is scoring a lot of points right now for me. The fact that it has the pen, the fact that it has good speakers, the fact that it has good looks, and it has a three to two aspect ratio, and it has a great price. So those are the things you want. Uh, let's see what Frankie has to say. I'd like to do Chromebooks. A very I like I do like Chromebooks. A very good backup or second laptop for daily use. Absolutely, Frankie. I agree, hundred percent. Great secondary device. Great device to take with you on the go. Good battery life should be on both of these. I think you're going to get about 8 to 10 hours on this one. I think about 7 or 8 if I remember correctly on this one, but I'm, I can't be certain until I do my testing. This one will be, they're both, this This is 3 pounds. I think this is less than 3 pounds, but they're both what well built. They're both solid. You're not skimping on build construction with this. All right, we got 19 of you in the studio. How is the stream looking? Let's see. 
Um, looking good so far, I guess. All right. We could talk about anything you want. Uh, this has been really a lot of fun, I got to tell you. Um, but again, good price. There's a little flex on the lid here. Very little on the Aces. Both really good builds. As you can see, they're both thin. Let's see a thickness comparison. So, so here you see them together. And as you can see, the Asus is a little, well, I don't know. It's let's let's see, maybe like this. You can see the difference. Very similar. Very similar. This or this already got dirty. <laughs> That's the ceramic white. So question is, will this stay clean? Good, good, good. But it does come right off. So that's good. All right. Yes, the HP reminds me of the Samsung Plus as well. Yes, it does. It. Uh, I think they remember correctly, the Samsung Chromebook Plus had the three to two aspect ratio also. That's what's probably reminding you of it. I, I agree. Okay, so it's been a crazy week here in Las Vegas. Um, we got two cases of you know what. I don't want to get demonetized, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's spreading around the country, and so you know what I'm talking about. All right, college notes. It's going to be one for the students, and I think that's who HP is definitely targeting with this, with the uh, Sakura. Absolutely, definitely, if you want to take notes with this, you definitely can do it. Uh, I, again, this is a new standard that they're trying to make that it could be used on multitude of devices with a uniform standard. Uh, USB-C charging, as I showed you, pretty good. Let me just check the Amazon stream because I haven't really been checking out checking it out. Hold on one second. I just want to make sure everything's looking okay. Let's just go to my iPad for that. It looks like it's going okay. Let me just check on Amazon Live on the web browser just to make sure. Oops, I always get this. How's everybody doing? Anything you want to talk about? Let me know now. Amazon Live, let's see. I love this. This is great. I get to interact with everybody. It's Friday night. What better thing can you be doing on a Friday? I mean, I'm sure you could think of a few better things, but this is a lot of fun. Let me just checking to make sure this is coming in clear to everybody. So I'm trying to do something a little bit different um, on this. And I think it's coming in okay, so that's good. I'm glad to see that. That that makes me happy. All right. Yeah, Frankie definitely can relate. Let me get you up on here. Frankie, oh, Tech for Your Needs, how are you, by the way? How are both laptops for photo editing apps? Uh, you could run either the Android. You could do both. Uh, you can run Android apps to edit photos on this with Google Photos, of course, or you can run natively on the Chrome OS. Thank you, um, thank you, Frankie. You stay safe, of course. Yeah, it's uh, been pretty scary, and you've been going through it for a while now. I know in Hong Kong, it's here, it's everywhere, and we got to stay safe. So let's pray that everybody will get through this. Um, Tech for your needs says, "How are both apps for photo editing?" Getting back to that, uh, I like it for photo editing. Um, let me just move this over a little bit. Sorry. Uh, I like it for photo editing. I like it for, you really can't do video editing. I mean, people try different things on this. You probably could theoretically. Um, productivity, you can use office apps on this. Of course, you can do that. This is great for consuming media, either one of these. Uh, I like this three to two aspect ratio better for typing on. I like the keyboard on both. Good key travel on both, but I think I might prefer the HP, a little bit more. I'm really digging this keyboard. Uh, this is a backlit keyboard. I'm not, I'm pretty sure, I thought I remember reading that this is, if somebody can correct me or clarify, that would be great. 
So we have 19 in the in the live stream. We've been live streaming almost one hour and five minutes. I I, I appreciate that, Terrell. Uh, it's you know, at first I didn't feel comfortable doing the intros and coming up, blah blah blah. But I guess people like it, and they're now getting more. They're used to it. And I'm used to it. I'm more comfortable doing it. And I think one of the things I learned doing this here in year, we're in my fifth year. I've done this more than four years already. Is that um, repetition is very is rewarded in a lot of ways. Even though if you try new things, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, so you give people what they want and you stay consistent and you upload on a consistent basis, you should be okay. But it's been tough. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I just released a video this week that bombed. It was the, <laughs> it was the, um, Dell Latitude, uh, 7220 extreme tablet. And I understand it's a very expensive, odd tablet in a sense that it's not your mainstream kind of thing. But H, uh, Dell sent it over for me to check out. And, I, and I, I wanted to check out something a little bit different. And I got to tell you, it has a thousand nit outdoor readable glove enabled display. So you could touch it with a glove. Unbelievable LTE on it. Sound was good. I love the fact it has physical buttons for screen brightness, screen volume, rotation, programmable buttons on the front. And it just bombed. I barely got 2,000 views, which not is not good if you're just wondering. So definitely have to have a tagline. I know Frankie has a very good tagline. I agree, Frankie. Um, you got to have a hook. Um, you got to be known for something, I guess. Um, and as the more you do it, the the more natural it feels to do it, actually, without coming off fake or anything, right? Um, so we're going to probably wrap it up soon. I wanted to really showcase these two, the Asus Chromebook Flip C434. Both of these are great for its ver their versatility. As you can see here, you can put them into the different modes. And I like the fact that these offer you that if you want to put them into tablet mode, if you want to, you know, you got you have that ability to do it. This is a little bit more narrow when in tablet mode, as I showed you. This one is a little bit more like a, like a notebook, like a school notebook or textbook. So that, those are the different differences between the two. I like the keyboard of the HP unit better. The keys are slightly larger. I agree with you 100%. I, I think the keyboard is better. We, we already talked about that, of course. Uh, police taglines, uh, seatbelt, click it or ticket. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, tech you tech for your needs. Don't forget to hit the like button, people, because we need to start getting more views. Now, my last couple of live streams, they're all doing okay. I'm not expecting big numbers because as I'm doing these, I'm doing these, I'm developing them. They're getting better. I got over, I think, 1,300 or 1,400 views, which is fine for a live stream. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'd like for you to do some budget Windows laptops. I, I'm going to be doing them, Richard Chacon, actually. Stay tuned. I have some on the way. Uh, can't say anything just yet, but I do have some more budget Windows. I have some premium stuff of Dell XPS 13 2020, which I got a sneak peek at uh, CES back in January. I want the 1,000 nits, but my wallet doesn't. Uh, Sakura, you're absolutely right. It's very, very expensive. And I took, a, of course, I take a chance when I review a product like that because it does take up a lot of time and energy to unbox it and review it. But usually Dell Latitude, which is, of course, Dell's business line, really does well on the channel. I get a solid 40, 50,000 views each time. This one just bombed. And, and again, I think it's just too much of a niche product to gain any kind of audience. I and mean, I was taking a chance. I knew it. I, I knew it had that potential to either be a great video in terms of uh, reach, or it could be a bomb. And it was a bomb. And it happens. I just hope HP's not mad at me. You should trademark your coming up. Uh, yes, I should. But I'm sure other people are doing it as well. So probably did it before me, I'm sure. But I don't know. It's just the way I say it, maybe. When is your schedule for doing these live streams? So this is, so William, thank you, good question. Uh, I've settled on, for my schedule, and I can only go work around my schedule right now, it's 7 p.m. 
Friday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time. So wherever time zone you're in, you'll figure it out. 7 p.m. Pacific time. You could always catch the replay. Um, and I noticed that other people, they do unlisted. I don't do that. I leave it up there to maybe the detriment of my channel, but I want everybody to get a chance to see the live stream. Um, but I do, I'm going to be doing this now. I will be doing also more on Saturdays. I will do some more Amazon stuff as I'm going to be more involved in that. So I'm going to do a lot of these simultaneous streams. Um, let's see what else. So that's the schedule. Yeah, I, I, I thank Han B. I appreciate that. I like that the tagline, it just happened naturally. I didn't really go out saying that to try to, oh, what's my tagline? It just sort of naturally evolved, and, and that's how I did. If you look at my earlier videos, I was trying all sorts of things. I mean, that's what you do. I can't even watch my videos from a few years ago. They're just, you, you, they're just unwatchable. I remember my first video, it's, and I never took them down. They're all there. My first... <laughs> I didn't even, shouldn't even tell you. My first video, I, I think I was unboxing a keyboard for the iPad 12.9 inch. I think it was. And I think I look at the box. I was talking for about 15 minutes before I actually opened it up. And if I look at it now, if I, if I happen chance to come across it and I'll say to myself, open the effing box, for God's sake. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Yes, the live streams hurt your channel. It has been proven by many. I agree. Um, and I don't care. I, I, I gained a few subscribers at the last live stream. I lost some on the one before that. So I understand the way to, 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 to put it unlisted. But I want to reach out to my community more. I, and I, I think at this point I have 77,000. We're going to hit 78,000 probably next couple of days or so. And it's still growing. Um, it definitely can hurt. I, I, I'm thinking of maybe spinning off a different channel, but we'll see. But yes, Tech Free Needs, you are right. And I'm something I'm worried about, but I'm also enjoying this so much that I don't want to stop. How does this compare to the Google Pixel Slate? Um, Fareed, I think these compared... They're, the Slate is a tablet. These are convertible, so that's one thing. So these are thicker. The slate will be more uh, uh, thin because it doesn't have the keyboard aspect of it and all the other folded over aspects of it. Um, the Pixel Slate had a lot of rough going in the beginning, but a lot of updates and a price reductions have made it a very uh, intriguing device, to say the least. Uh, my early videos are terrible. Uh, Frankie, let me tell you, you actually, one thing I got to say is you early on had something good because I noticed it early on when you were just starting. And I noticed that um, you had a good personality. You had a good passion for the devices. And that that comes through. And then, you know, that always, that comes through. If you, if you have a good personality, it goes a long way, especially in this uh, arena. That's for sure. But yeah, some of the early videos, my early videos, I cannot watch. They're unwatchable as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. <laughs> so if anybody wants to get a laugh, look at some of my early videos. They were just a total disaster. Uh, but I was experimenting with different things with graphics that I wasn't sure. I didn't really know how to edit video properly. I didn't get the audio levels right. The lighting was bad. The audio was terrible. I, the microphones were not great. So, yeah, it just evolves over time. So right now we're at an hour and 13 minutes. Um, do you want me to make this? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep doing these. I know it does hurt the channel, but... Uh, I don't think long term it will, but who knows? Hopefully it doesn't. Many, yeah, I agree. Many creators go through that learning experience. And there's only one way to do it, as Tech Free Needs will attest to. You just got to go out there and do it. You just got to make videos, good or bad. Just get out there and do it. You don't need fancy equipment. I went out and I bought a lot of, early on, I bought a lot of expensive equipment. And unnecessarily so. I should have honed the craft better and then go and then see. Uh, you have your smartphones. They work perfectly fine, especially with the way the cameras are now. They're just as good as DSLRs. They're just as good as high-end video cameras. So there's no excuse to, to start a channel. It's not that easy, but it through time, repetition, and practice, and experience, you will get better. 
I could try Chinese laptops with low budget like Chewy and others. Now, Sakura, very interesting. I that That's my original things that I did on the channel. I, I did Chewy. I did Tech Last. I did all of them. If you look back two, three years ago, uh, most of my videos were of those kind of early on. I was doing those. I work with companies like Gear Best. I uh, companies like, um, uh, what was the other one? Banggood and all those. Here's the problem. The problem is they were sending me such junk. After a while, I just couldn't take it. And and what was happening was I was starting to do Samsung stuff. I was starting to do Apple stuff. And I was starting to get um, some traction with it. And so my Samsung videos did really well. My HP videos did really well. And I started slowly moving away from the Chinese stuff. Although I still like them. And occasionally, you'll notice I will review some of them. Like I did that... Um, what was that 11 inch I recently did? Uh, what was it? It was pretty good too. But you see, I forgot the name. See, they have these names that are terrible. So I can't remember, but it was pretty good build. It was a, it had a, um, the uh, N4100 processor, I believe. So yeah, I used to do a lot of that stuff. I used to do a lot of more smartphones, but what's happening now with uh, YouTube is you have to find a niche, unfortunately, and I think the laptops and tablets were more my niche. I tried, I just did the Samsung Note 10 Lite. We did the live stream. It did bomb. The And I don't know, maybe it may be tech for your needs. You can maybe shed light on this. Maybe it was because I did a live stream. Maybe these will do bad if I, I do these live streams. But I kind of like it. I think it's a different way to interact with the audience. Um, it's less polished, of course, but I think I'm getting better. My experience with GearBest has not been good, Frankie. I I also had a bad experience with them at the end. I want product A, but they want to send product B, which is total garbage. I agree. See, Frankie knows what I'm talking about. Um, I used to deal a lot with GearBest, and then they got a little heavy-handed with me, and then they were sending me real garbage. And I'm like, I told them, don't send me anything anymore because it's hurting my channel. And I can't talk, I can't, I can't present that to my audience. In good conscience, I couldn't. Um, I just couldn't. And 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 then they would tell me, "Oh, we'll send you this if you do this." And I, I said, "I don't play that game. You want me to review it? Send it over. I'll review it." Uh, but I'm not playing that game. And then they with the the different promotions they were doing and all that. I, I'm just I, and they they would constantly harass me about it. And I just said, "You know what? It's not worth it." When I work with companies like HP, Dell, Lenovo, Samsung. So hopefully soon, Asus, all these other companies that I'm dealing with now, even Huawei, they're a pleasure to deal with. Even the PR companies that they work with, um, they're professional. They they know what uh, they know how to deal with these things. They're not trying to be undermining anything you're doing. They're not asking to see the video before it's released. They're not any of the, they, they're giving you a fair way. They give you the product here, review it, take the time you need to review it. And then when you're done with it, send it back to us. We're not asking you for a favorable review. If you have a flaw, let us know what it is though. So they can, they can improve it. I've gotten that before where I've pointed out some serious flaws on some products. And I mentioned them in the videos and they were very good about that. They didn't say, Oh, we're not sending you another product again. But how can we improve it? What's the problem? And we work together on one specific one. I'm not going to mention it because uh, I don't know if they want me to. But they actually found the problem in while I was testing. I found the problem. I brought it to their, their attention. And they actually fixed it on the next generation device. So that's something that I can't say for a lot of these other Chinese companies. So I definitely like working. So to answer your question, Sakura, uh, I used to do a lot more Chinese laptops and low budget stuff. I've moved away from that just simply because the, not because the products are that bad. Cause you, sometimes you find the gem every so often it's just that some of the people that are working behind the scenes on that are not the best kind of people. Okay. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. So Frankie had a very similar, like he's saying here, he had a very similar experience when it comes to gear best. And I'm not, look, I'm not here to badmouth gear best. I just choose not to work with them anymore. If you want to discuss this more, DM on Twitter. I'm glad to help you on this. Thank you so much, Tech for Your Needs. Absolutely. I definitely would love to discuss it more. Um, yeah, I could definitely see how this can affect the channel. Um, if, uh, 
and he comes up with a good suggestion here. My suggestion is create another channel, but then it is like you're starting over. I don't understand why you put the feature and hurt creators in the long run. I definitely agree. Um, we'll see. I, I'm definitely thinking of spinning off another channel, so we'll see. All right, so we're at about an hour and 20 minutes, and I think we're going to call it a night. I have some stuff I still need to do. I need to test these two laptops, the two Chromebooks. I'm very excited. Looking good so far, the HP Chromebook X360 12B. The, if you're watching me on Amazon, it's in the carousel below. And, of course, the Asus Chromebook Flip C434. Again, all metal, premium design, on sale on Amazon Prime for $500 or so. Again, in the carousel below. I want to thank everybody. Frankie, Tech for Your Needs, uh, Chandra Khan Patel, William Cohen, uh, Richard, Han B, Farid, of course, uh, all you guys have been so great for participating, and this is what makes it really worth it. Yeah, I may lose some subscribers, but you know what? I'm gaining the ones, and I'm, I'm really satisfying the ones that are sticking with me from day one, and that I appreciate. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you, Charles. Um, who else am I? Fly Guy's here. I didn't see you. I did see you, but I didn't see that it was you commenting. Thank you for stopping by as usual. Uh, speaking of the Samsung, uh, cause I know you like the Samsung galaxy book S I will have some videos dropping on those soon and then some comparison videos. So stay tuned on that and you'll be really happy with that. Um, so I'm going to call it a night. I want to wish everybody, uh, a good night and thank you for checking out the live stream. And we'll, we'll I'm pretty sure we'll be doing this again next week. So until the next Live stream. This is Andrew signing off, and I'll see you in the next video.